Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So for today, Ruger SR 1911 Commander, Commander meaning shorter barrel, shorter slide in your full size 1911. And I'm going to teach you guys how to clean this and keep it maintained. And same goes for any 1911. Let's take a look. So to start, let's talk about what you'll need to get this job done. You'll need some kind of cleaner. All right? I prefer CLP Break Free. You can get them in big bottles off Amazon, uh, divvy them up into smaller bottles like this, little spray bottles to help get in those little crevices. Uh, a little easier to manage. It is a cleaner, lubricant, and preservative. Works well. Uh, a lot of folks like to use some kind of solvent, like number nine right here. Uh, this is a uh, gun bore cleaner. It's a solvent that kind of helps uh, dilute a lot of and clean up a lot of the uh, grime and buildup and carbon buildup in this firearm here. Uh, you will need gloves, especially if you're going to do number nine here. You'll need the gloves. Uh, this is not really good on the skin. Uh, you will also need a good stack of cotton swabs. You might need one of these picks, all right? These little uh, Tipton picks, I think they're called. Uh, it, you could use these to help kind of get these pads in spots that might be kind of hard to get to with just your hands. Uh, and same goes for an old toothbrush. And this is not designed to really clean as it is designed to loosen up any dirt and grime so that you can get the clean pads and wipe it away and get it on nice and sparkly clean. Uh, you might need a couple of attachments along with a cleaning rod. In fact, you will need at least a brush. Um, nylon works great. If you don't have that brass, do not use a steel brush to go through your bore of the barrel. One of these. And of course, you could also use a pull through to help with the pads, kind of mop it out a little bit, clean it up. So that's what you'll need. So now you know what you need to get this job done. First step, and with cleaning any firearm, actually the first step is to make sure she's empty. All right, take out the mag, get there, go ahead, check the chamber, make sure nothing's in there, nothing in the magazine area, good there. All right, now this is a hammer-fired weapon, uh, designs over 100 years old. Uh, it's not a strike fire, it's very different than your typical Glock or your M&P or something along that lines. So there's a few extra steps. All right, I'm gonna walk you through. So on the front of the handgun right here, you're gonna see a little plunger right here. Typically it has some kind of uh, kind of texturing on the end here like this. Uh, the Ruger SR1911s uh, do come with a tool, uh, a little plastic plunger thing. You can go and hold it down, but you can go ahead and take your finger, push it down. All right, see how it holds like that. Uh, you wanna hold it down. All right, and then let it go. A lot of spring pressure, so be very careful that this doesn't just go shoot off across the room. Put that there. You can see now you have relieved the pressure of the slide, like that. So now what you do is actually push the slide back, all right, until the magazine catch lines up with the back smaller notch. Not the big notch, the smaller notch, all right. On the other side here is this little protrusion here. Okay, and what you can do is you're gonna line this up perfectly, right like that, and you're gonna push from the other side. All right, that is gonna allow you to take this whole piece out. Okay, all right, so so far so good. Now what you can do is take the whole slide off. All right, and now you can see the frame, nice and dirty, ready to be cleaned, scrubbed, taken care of. I've not had a single issue with this firearm. Uh, bought it a few years ago, you can take it to the range regularly. Um, no issues whatsoever. So keep it clean, keep it maintained. 1911s run fine. Uh, next, what you want to do is you have the bushing up here that we'd used earlier. You want to go ahead and turn it like this. All right, so it was actually pointed, uh, I would say at like the nine o'clock position. You want to rotate it all the way around until it's like a quarter turn and then it pops right out. Put that to the side up here. Spring, guide rod. A little bit different design. All right, uh, and then of course your barrel. Go ahead, this little notch, little loop here. Make sure you face forward towards the end of the barrel because you're gonna pull this straight out. All right, notice how that locks in place. It's got uh, divots here and then ridges here. All right, and that is the full disassembly. Nice and dirty. 
So I like to start with the smaller parts, uh, preferably the barrel, and then kind of go into some of these smaller pieces here to clean this up. Um, what I'm gonna do actually is I will do some of the number nine. Uh, a lot of you guys have commented in past cleaning videos that you prefer the solvent, uh, even though CLP does work fine. Uh, solvent, I think in the long term, might clean it out a little better. Uh, it definitely cleans it out a little quicker in terms of the barrel and the grime. So what you can do is take one of these patches here, get a little bit on the end, don't need a whole lot of this stuff. All right. And what you're going to do is start off like, like this. And actually, I just take my aluminum rod here. Just get it in there. Let it kind of soak in. And if you want, you can go ahead after the first pass to kind of loosen up some of the grime. Put it on your wire brush. And what I like to do and this does not work in a smaller 22 or 223 5.56 caliber. Uh, the chambers are so tight with those. Um, what I like to do is go and put the patch on the outside of the brush brush and then push it through slowly and let it follow the rifling so that when it pops out, you can see it fell into all the grooves of the rifling and really, really cleaned it out. All right, take this out, go ahead. Try it again. And this is with the solvent to start. All right. Uh, what I want to do now is actually go ahead and take some of this CLP. All right. I'm just going to spray a little bit on the outside, spray a little bit in the barrel, take a fresh patch, go ahead, clean the outside of the barrel off. All right. Clean the inside crown there. All right, it's really not too dirty. Um, the part of the 19 that gets really dirty is actually the frame and the slide uh, over the, then the, rather than just the barrel. All right, clean it up here a little bit. If you want to take your pick, you can. Get in some of these grooves underneath this hook here. See that, see a little bit of dirt underneath there. Go ahead. Get in here. This is where that pick comes in handy, you see that? So there's dirt kind of hiding in these little grooves here. Go ahead and take the pick. You can go up or down. Uh, and once you get the external part of the barrel done, uh, what I like to do actually is take another fresh patch here. Go ahead, put it on your wire brush here. Again, you can wrap it around here. Take some of your CLP, just a little bit on there, and go ahead and run it through. And then repeat this step um, until these patches come out pretty clean, actually. All right, this is actually getting close. So do this a few more times, and you'll be ready for the next step. And now once you go ahead and push some clean patches through and you're not getting any grime on there after running with the bristle brush here several times, uh, you're kind of good to go. Uh, and the last thing I like to do for the barrel is spray just a dab of this on here. All right, and then just go ahead, ball it up, run it down a little bit, just to kind of do it a couple of times, just to get a little light film of oil in there. Nothing too crazy. You don't want globs of oil stuck in there. All right, you can go ahead and Wipe down the outside of the barrel, and you're on to the next step. I right, can put the clean parts aside. So go ahead, a little oil on there. You're pretty much done for the most part with the brush and the uh, the hook piece here. Uh, I didn't really use the hook that much, but sometimes you do need it uh, for some of the smaller bores. You might need it. Um, some of these parts over here. All right, right here. You can actually go ahead and. This hand wipe down. And they're going to be pretty dirty, uh, and there are some small crevices in here. Uh, if you want to use your toothbrush, now is the time to do it. Uh, for the most part, you can get these clean with your hands because they don't have too many crazy notches in there. Let's go ahead, get in all the little grooves. Let me take your little pick here. Let it slide in there. All right, get some more of that stuff out of there. As you clean the grit off, 
of all the little pieces here, put it on the side, and then you can hit it again at the end with a clean piece to make sure you have a light film on there because right now you're just kind of wiping it down with oil and some of the grime is staying on there. So you just want to make sure that the grime does go off and stay off. All right. Uh, the spring, I mean, just go ahead and you can turn it around a little bit. Let's get in there. Um, this part does come off. All right, you can see that there. So if you wanted to get in here, you can. All right, it's just like cleaning a guide rod on modern firearms. So you wanna just kinda spot check it. Doesn't have to be shiny clean or anything like that. All right, get the spring back on there. And then take a fresh cloth at the end. A little streak of oil. Go ahead, hit this thing again. All right, and hit all of them again. Uh, you can see it's fairly clean for the most part. Hit them all again, put them to the side, and then on to the next step. So the slide of a 1911, all right? They all look fairly the same. Uh, you can see right here, here is where the hammer hits, and then the firing pin will poke out right in there. You can see that. All right, and what you wanna do actually is, I would take your brush, all right? Don't put anything on it, but I will go ahead and Put the barrel where the barrel would be on the table. All right, firing pins right up here. I will go ahead and hit the face here at this angle just to help loosen some of that grit because the channel where the firing pin in is where the firing pin is in uh, is a very delicate channel. You really don't want to put any kind of oil in there. Anything that could actually kind of get grimed up and gritty and cause problems in the long term. Uh, there is a way to take this apart if you want to do a deeper field strip, uh, take the firing pin out and all that, but for maintenance issues, you're gonna try to avoid doing that. So I went ahead and scrubbed the face a little bit, already looking a lot better. What you can do now is if you want, you can take some solvent again, just a dab. Oh, well, I may have grabbed too much, but <laughs> that's probably these hops bottles. You can probably get this hops in a uh, smaller container as well. Uh, you can go ahead and just take a little off of a larger piece there. Uh, and this part is really dirty. Um, so if you want, you can get some solvent in here in the rails. Uh, in the front here, it gets really dirty. Um, up at the bushings, that, bushings at, you see it gets really dirty. Um, you can go ahead and clean in there a little bit with the solvent. Again, try to avoid that firing pin channel up there. You definitely don't want to spray oil down in there or spray solvent down in there. Uh, and I don't use solvent every time. Uh, this one I hadn't cleaned in a while in the last few range trips, so I just want to make sure I get it nice and sparkly clean. All right, maybe we go take a clean cloth, kind of see where we're at. You can see it's all nice and sparkly clean already. It doesn't take much to clean these. You will run through maybe 15, 20 patches uh, of these little two inch patches, uh, but you buy them in bulk and uh, each firearm only takes probably like 20 minutes or so to clean after a range day, so you can get a few done in an hour. All right, so there's still some grit in here. Uh, these patches are still a little dirty. Uh, what I would do actually is grab a fresh patch, a little bit of CLP. All right, get your pick. Go ahead, get in all these channels, all right, especially where the grooves are where the barrel kind of falls into place there. Get in these channels, get into the rails, Get in there a little bit. You can see some of the stuff hiding underneath the grooves there. That's where this pick comes in handy. Uh, you can also use uh, toothpicks or if you want to use some kind of um, any other kind of pick or maybe uh, possibly a Q-tip. I have to be careful with Q-tips. Those cloth tips like to flake off. You don't want to leave too much stuff to possibly jam up the gun. So you want to make sure you clean anything, you, any kind of particles off. Uh, but these picks look to work really well. If you want to clean up these little grooves here, you can. All right, clean the back off here just a little bit. Again, don't pour any oil down there. All right, you want to make sure that stays loose, all right? You don't want to mess around with that too much. In fact, that's a big issue with uh, 
the SKS rifle. You want to make sure you keep it clean because of the floating firing pin in there. And if that gets gummed up, you end up getting automatic fire for the most part. So it's always good to keep an SKS clean. All right, go ahead and hit it with a clean patch. Don't worry about leaving too much oil. I mean, anything on your hands or anything like that might be enough on the slide to consider a nice film of oil to be left behind. Uh, go ahead and clean this up as much as you can. Of course, it's hard wearing gloves. Uh, it's good for your hands, but it's gonna be hard to kind of make it sparkly clean. But at the end, if you want to wipe it down with a cloth, you can. All right, this is pretty clean. Uh, there's still some particles in here. So let's, I'm gonna finish this up and we'll go to the frame. So before we move on, I wanted to show you one more thing. See that little uh, piece sticking out there? Right there. All right, that is the extractor, okay? Now the extractor is a fairly important part that you wanna actually get behind because what's gonna happen is that extractor right here is gonna grab the end of the brass. I know it's kinda hard to see there. Uh, it's gonna grab the tail end of the brass there and extract the spent casing. So what you wanna do is you wanna take a piece of cloth, it's fairly clean, and possibly your pick, and you wanna scrub behind the extractor, all right? You wanna make sure it's nice and clear of debris in there, nothing that could potentially cause a malfunction by not being able to grab that spent case. All right, you can kinda of see there's some grip behind there. So just make sure you clean behind that, and that's a very important part. So, last part to clean is the frame. You can see there's some good bit of grit there on the top, on the in the rails, uh, all that's gotta go. Um, if you want, you can go with the hops again. Um, I'm just gonna use the CLP for this one. Uh, again, hops, you can use at your discretion to kind of see what you need, what cleans it, but CLP seems to work great for most cases. So go ahead and kind of get a light clean going. There you go. Get in here where the ramp is. That ramp of the round comes and slides up into the barrel, into the chamber. All right, you can use your toothbrush in here if you want. Uh, luckily, being a 45, uh, it's pretty good size to get your fingers down in here. Get the back area of the mag, mag well cleaned up. Uh, you can clean back here if you want. Make sure you get in these rails. All right. Make sure you switch out your fresh pieces, fresh pieces of cotton here because yeah, otherwise you're gonna end up just kind of spraying grit that you already cleaned up, just spreading it around. So you wanna get a fresh patch in there. Go ahead, clean back here near the hammer. Usually isn't too dirty back there. Um, if you wanna take your pick, you can. In fact, you will most likely need the pick here in a minute. Uh, you can go ahead and go up and down the rail here. Make sure all that's clean. Again, up and down the rail, make sure that's clean. And you can see in this channel right here, it's fairly dirty. So if you want, you can take your pick in here. See if we can get it nice and clean in there. Uh, this channel here isn't too bad. Um, just in the back here, gets kind of grimy. And yeah, it's good to clean out. Once in a while, get as best you can. It doesn't just kind of a spot clean. Nothing too crazy. Uh, if you want, you can take a clean patch, kind of run it around in here. You can see it's still a little dirty, so we're missing a few spots. So let's go ahead and keep cleaning all these grooves out, uh, get behind any moving parts here, uh, like this plunger here, because you're gonna need to make sure that is fully operational to uh, reassemble the firearm. So just keep hitting this, and then we'll talk about how to put this back together and wrap this up. Uh, the last step you wanna do once this is clean is you would like to see it. Uh, you wanna take a dropper like this. Uh, again, CLP is a lubricant and preservative as well. I would actually go ahead and you wanna drop it on some wear spots, all right? Uh, so you can see just by the rails, of course, here, you can see some wear in there. Uh, I'll just put a thin little line right there. Nothing too crazy, you don't want to glob it up, just a little thin film there. Uh, that's a good spot there. Um, little drop right there. All right, look on your barrel. Uh, you kind of want to look around to see there's some wear on the end here. Same goes for uh, Glocks and MMPs and things like that. Um, so I would actually go ahead and put a line right there. All right, look around for any of the wear spots. All right, a little bit back there. 
All right, that's usually pretty good. Uh, this spring, I mean, if you want to kind of just wipe it down a little bit from whatever's on your gloves, that's all you really need for the spring. Uh, just kind of keep it protected. If you want to hit these rails on the inside, you can. Uh, it's not really necessary, but right here is a good spot. Again, real light film. Uh, the CLP works great. I mean, all, all my firearms tend to run pretty flawlessly, uh, and I tend to only use CLP and, of course, hops uh, when you do see me use the number nine there. Um, if you want to put just a little in here where the bushing is going to go back in, you can. Uh, that's about all the spots I would put it on, really. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about reassembly. So, of course, as you could imagine, it's going to go in reverse from how we took it apart. So starting with the slide, take your barrel, slider in place. She's going to lock in, all right? And it kept, of course, that's because of those grooves that I showed you earlier in there. She's going to lock in place in the back there. Looks like that. Okay. Spring back to front. All right. There's a spot on the spring with a curved piece right here. That's going to go, of course, against the barrel. Fits the shape there. All right. Now this, I would actually point this forward. Little uh, black knob here. Point that forward for now. Okay. Go ahead. And I would take your frame and start upside down. This seems to work pretty well for me. Start upside down. All right. And then flip it over. Okay. Oh, make sure your safety's off. <laughs> You're not going to be able to slide it back with the safety on. Safety off there. All right, so here's the tricky part with these, okay? The reason why I put that black knob facing forward is because it's gonna use gravity to drop down. All right, because if you line this slide up to this notch right here, all right, you're gonna see, let me see if I can show you guys. Might be hard to see. There you go. All right, can you see my hand through there? All right, that hole right there? Now watch. See how it's ob obstructed there? So that black piece is actually falling straight down, lines up perfectly, and when you line this slide up and push the barrel all the way back, that black piece should line up with this hole right here, which allows you to take this piece right here, and in fact, I wanted to grab a little piece of oil here and drop it right on there, just a little bit. It's a good wear spot to have it on there. All right, and then you go ahead. Put the plunger back in. All right. Go ahead. Move your slide forward. Okay. Now you can go ahead and point this to the sky like this. Take your bushing. All right, it's gonna go in kind of at a quarter turn there. You wanna make it through the spring and bring it around the other side like that. Just rotate it around like that. Now you got your plunger here. Plunger goes all the way down. Keep a good grip on it. Try not to get your glove trapped there. <laughs> Slide that back. Locked in place. All right, wipe her down. As good as new. All right, nice and clean. Much smoother action now than it was. Real slick. That stainless steel looks great. And you're done. So, so that's just one way to clean a 1911, guys. There's a bunch of different ways. I'm sure the military has their own way back when these were in service. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments or any other ideas, things I could do better to make these work, make this cleaning video work a little better for you, let me know in the comments down below. I'll be happy to answer them. Hey, and if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. It really helps me out. Uh, like this video, and I'll see you in the next review. Thank you.